can see that the implied volatility premiums are back, baby. And that's important because we didn't have implied volatility premiums for like the last week. And all of a sudden you get a bit of a correction or VIX goes north of 12 and wham up right there. You can see the premiums in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ like 35 to 40% in that uh, area code. Uh, if you go down to XLY, you're down, you're up, yeah, it's in the 30% range. So that's much better, much better. Again, you don't want to buy stocks when they are A at, I'll do this quickly. Let's do the ABCs. A, you don't want to buy stocks when? When they're at the top end of the risk range. You don't want to do that. And B, they, they have an implied volatility discount versus 30 day realize. Implied volatility discount, okay? So when these two things, when A and B happens, you know what to do, or you know what not to do. You don't buy stocks when they have those two things. You buy stocks when they're at the bottom end of their risk range and they develop an implied volatility premium. That's better, okay? Make sense? If it doesn't, ask questions, happy to teach that. This is a good rule. Not, it's not gonna make you, I don't know, probably make you better than Jim Cramer, but it's, it's not gonna make you perfect. It'll make you a lot better than a lot of people. This is good discipline, so think about that. Uh, Netflix, great example of that. Netflix, uh, as it was stroking its all-time high there, uh, it had a implied volatility discount of 45%. It's not gonna have that today, because Netflix is gonna get tagged again today. It's, and Netflix is gonna be at the low end of its risk range, not the top end of its risk range, and we'll see if it has an implied volatility discount or premium. I would much prefer that it has a premium after having a discount. So again, it's the rate of change within the signal that matters. That's why you measure and map sequence. Measure, map, sequence. Do that over and over and over again.